are reading Zane and the Hurricane, and we are on chapter five. Now remember, what was happening is mom had called, Zane's mom had called and said that the hurricane was on its way and that um, they needed to get out of New Orleans, right? Um, and they started packing and everything. And um, at the end of chapter four, Miss Trissy explains that they don't have a car and that the taxis are taking a long time to get it. Um, and that's where we left off. All right, so rise up and go. Going home a few days early seems like a great idea to me, even if I ha we had to blame it on a hurricane. New, Hampshire's, um, New Hampshire won't be as hot and muggy as New Orleans, that's for sure. And home has a real TV and my PlayStation, and I'll have my friends, and Bandy will have all the familiar places to he sniffs around and does his business. Plus, I won't have to feel guilty about Miss Trissy because she's coming with us. That's the way mom, that way mom can deal with the old lady while I'm getting ready to go back to school. Perfect. Selfish? Maybe. Okay, totally selfish. But I'm so psyched about going home that I get my stuff packed in like five minutes and carry it out to the porch, excuse me, the gallery, and check with Miss Trissy to make sure she's called for the taxi. Take him an hour to fetch us, she explains. They busy. She's at her little telephone table in the hallway and her hands are kind of fluttering around like she's trying to touch invisible things. She always looks old, but now she looks kind of sick too. What's wrong, Grammy? Her ancient wrinkled eyes are wet with tears. Nice you call me Grammy. Oh my, yes, just like your father. Did you know that? That your daddy called me Grammy. Of course you didn't, but why are you crying? The stone, she says, which is her way of saying storm. Already worried my way through Hurricane Dennis that barely missed us, and now comes this Katrina. One after another, you get settled from one storm, and uh, they come another. Stone's gonna be the end of me. No, no, don't worry, we'll be fine. You're gonna love New Hampshire, Grammy, promise. Come on, sit down in your favorite chair and rest until the taxi gets here. I help her settle into the easy chair, but her hands are shaking so bad she loses grip on her canes and they skitter to the floor, which sets the dog to barking. Bandy, hush! Ain't the wind I'm afraid of, she says. It's the water. The water take all this away like Betsy did and leave me with no place to live in my last days. Betsy? Hurricane in 1965. Forty years ago, it flooded this house up to the window sills. Rising water drove us up into the attic. Imagine me climbing through that little hole in the ceiling. Well, I did. Had to. My husband Henry brung him a little hatchet in case we had to chop through the roof. Then the water went back down and we never did need that hatchet. But we was cleaning up and fixing up for most part of a year after that stone. Me and Henry don't got it in me to go through nothing like that again. I say, on TV, they always make it sound worse than it is. Probably it'll just blow a few trees down, that's all. The old woman shakes her head sorrowfully. We can't know that, child. Nobody knows but the good Lord, and he ain't saying. Right about then, my cell phone rings. Mom again. But the connection is so bad, I can barely hear her. There's a... Problem, she says, all creaky and distant. The call fades away into static, but not before she gives me the bad news. The, the really bad news. Grammy goes, what's wrong, child? You look like you ate a bug. There's a lump in my throat, not because I'm afraid of the storm, which is probably stupid, but because the promise of going home early has been snatched away, and it makes me more homesick than ever. Delta canceled our flight, I finally managed to explain. They canceled all the flights for the next few days. Mom is trying to get us on a standby with another airline, but so far she can't get through. The old woman doesn't seem the least bit surprised. She hums to herself for a while and then gives me a big smile and goes, You said it yourself, Zane Dupree. We're going to be okay. I guess. Today is Saturday, and the stone won't be coming until Monday soonest, right? 
So we got all of Sunday, Grandma, Grammy says. Here's what we're going to do. Tomorrow morning, we're going to church and see what the Lord provides. I must have walked past the new Zion Baptist a bunch of times with Bandy and didn't even notice the place be because at a glance, it looks like the rest of the houses in the neighborhood. Just another long, narrow building with white clapboards and a saggy front porch. But if you look closer, there's a little wind vine kind of steeple tacked to the peak of the roof and a hand-lettered sign out on the sidewalk that says, Worship with Reverend W.B. Daniels, Jr., Pastor. Special service today, 11 a.m., and under that, Sunday school canceled. Grammy walks to her church on her two canes and won't let me help her. She made me put on my only white shirt and an old tie that belonged to Henry that smells of mothballs. She doesn't approve of my Nikes, but I don't have any dress shoes with me and her husband's old shoes don't fit. So the Nikes will have to do. Still, she's all got up in a blue satin dress and what she calls her church shoes and a wig that looks kind of purple and a lacy blue hat on the top of her wig. Sounds funny when I tell it like that with all the wig and all, but somehow she looks right, like a proper old lady on Sunday morning, all fixed up for church. A man in a dark suit stands on the steps outside the church, looking up and down the street and checking his watch. He's a big dude with shiny dark skin and friendly eyes and gold rim reading glasses that hang on a cord around his neck. When he catches sight of us, his face lights up. Miss Trissy, welcome. Wasn't sure I was gonna see you this morning of all mornings he says, leaning down and kissing her on her cheek. Many of our parishioners have already gone. I come to sing for my great-grandchild I never knew I had, she says all in a burst, like she's been saving it up and has to get it out fast. As the pastor shakes, his hand, shakes my hand, he sort of looks me over, then back and forth between my great-grandmother. Finally, he goes, you know what? I do see it. Yeah, I see it in the eyes and the nose. Can you sing too, Mr. Dupree? Did the gift pass to you? I shake my head. Mighty does sing, Grammy says, smiling at me. No way I'm going to sing in church and make a fool of myself. Totally no way. Okay, try going to church in New Orleans and not sing. They won't let you. It's practically against the law. Not to sing in church there. It's right off... It starts right off the bat, too. Pastor Daniels reads us a few lines of scripture, and then he turns to his keyboard set up alongside the podium. And as soon as his fingers touch the keys, the whole room is singing in this old-fashioned hymn about a storm clouds and strong winds and finding the Savior and how sweet he is. The pastor, he's got a big voice that fills the place. And soon we're all kinds of swaying back and forth in our seats, and you don't even have to know the words. They're already there in the air, waiting for you to sing them. Then at the end of the first chorus, the pastor sets off a drum machine, changing the beat. And suddenly that old hymn turns into a stomping blues rock kind of thing. And that's when Grammy stands up in the pews and opens her mouth. What comes out really floors me. because she's got this deep, uplifting voice that's almost as big as the pastor's, a voice so young and beautiful it makes you want to cry and laugh at the same time, coming out of this little old lady like that. Everybody in the church is clapping, duh, 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 clap, duh, 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 clap, and swaying and from side to side, shouting out, tell the Lord, Miss Trissy, and singing like an echo on the chorus, it's enough to make you want to jump in the aisle and start dancing like a maniac, which, of course, I don't. I just clap along and maybe sing a little bit, keeping kind of quiet so that nobody notices my froggy voice that keeps missing a note. Not that anybody does notice, and that's the nice thing, is, is that when the hymn is over, my great grandmother takes my hand and holds it like it's something precious. That's when I really understand how cool it is that Miss Beatrice Jackson is still alive in the world for me to know, even if it m meant coming all the way to Smellyville to find her. After the one song, Pastor Daniel calms us down and leads us in the Lord's Prayer, and then he thanks us for all for coming and tells us this will be the end of his special service. 
because the time has come to leave. I pray we will all be in attendance next Sunday and the sun will be shining and then no harm will have come to us or this ward or our little church. But you heard me right, brothers and sisters, you must go now. This very morning, the mayor has issued a mandatory evacuation. They called most every church and every pastor to make sure the word gets out. They're saying the hurricane may push a great wave of water over the top of the levees and flood the city. And some of you are old enough to recall the last time that happened when much of our lower ninth neighborhood was flooded. We pray that this hurricane passes us by as so often they do and that the Lord is merciful hand will calm the waters so no harm comes to no one. But brothers and sisters, make no mistake. We must take action as we lift our voices in prayer. We must lift ourselves from these pews and go out and find transportation. Pack your bags and leave. Lock your doors and leave. Go family, go to friends, but go you must. Bad winds are coming, brothers and sisters, and the waters may rise. Get thee to higher ground. Go, go, go. That does it. The church empties until there's no one left but me and Grammy and the pastor. Is there no one to carry you, he asks. The old woman shakes her head. Best you come with me, he says. We'll make room in the bus. And that is chapter five.